Uh, <coughs> British Open last year, 2008, uh, Royal Birkdale, uh, it was extremely windy conditions that week and um, I was playing another golf ball at the time and my ball flight was getting up in the air a little bit too much and uh, I was on the range and I asked my caddy to go over there and grab some of those tailor-made reds because I heard it was a lower spin rate ball and and um, I started hitting a couple of them. My ball flight came down dramatically. The overflight was tremendous. I adjusted to it extremely fast and uh, it was just like a night and day golf ball for me from the ones I'd used in the past to, to that one and I've stayed with it ever since. So the door was cracked open to some degree. I loved the mindset of where TaylorMade was going um, and not only that, the history of TaylorMade. You know, they've been around 30 years, I've been around 30 years, so uh, it's an, it was a natural getting together process. TaylorMade's been around for 30 years, has a great history of producing quality equipment, um, great history about understanding the game, number one, cares about its constituents, which is the golfer themselves. I'm proud of my association with TaylorMade. They've got the credibility and they've got the history behind them. So with that credibility and history, they've got the deliverables. And their deliverables is the quality of the product they have out there. Well, I've been trying to explain this to everybody. What happened at the British Open is totally different from what happens at the, at the Masters. Uh, what happened at the, at the British Open was a bit of an anomaly, to tell you the truth. I mean, I hadn't practiced, I hadn't played. I came in there um, not feeling really sharp about my game, but all of a sudden I got to a golf course I absolutely loved. I am a pretty good bad weather player because I improvise a lot. Um, so as the week went by, I started to feel my way better and better. So... Going into Augusta, there's a lot. Nobody asked me a question before Tuesday of the British Open. Now I've been asked questions for six months going into Augusta, right? So I'm trying to keep everybody else's expectations low and keep mine exactly where I'm going to go into Augusta. So, uh, you know, it's, it's great to go back there. There's no question. Um, totally different golf course than I played in 2002 to what it is today. I uh, went up there and played about a week ago. It's the longest golf course I've ever played in my life. It makes Beth Page Black look like a pitch and putt course. Um, so it's a totally different dynamic for me going up there. I just only hope the weather's in decent, warmish type of condition. The ball releases a little bit. If not, it's, uh, it's a long, long golf course. I carry the ball a long way, but I get zero roll. I mean, it may be rolled two or three yards, just hit and stop. Uh, so I had no overflight at all. So people uh, with the overflight were out driving me by 20 or 30 yards. So I talked to the uh, field reps of um, Taylor Made, and we went out there and we started adjusting my R9 driver. And all of a sudden, by moving the weight forward, eight grams either side on heel and toe and six at the, in, the, in the heel, um, all of a sudden my ball flight came down dramatically my carry was still good but when it hit the ground it kept going I'm in very much a neutral position I mean I don't set it up for a hook or a, a slice I'm a neutral player but um, I even set it up in a practice session thinking okay maybe at Augusta just maybe at Augusta you might adjust your driver in a practice round and see how you go for that and then if it doesn't work just put it right back to your neutral position and that's the beauty of technology. You don't have to take another driver and get used to that driver, make sure that shaft's the same shaft. You've got all the components identical, the same technology's there. Again, use it. Um, to be honest with you, I wish they had never taken place. I, I can understand to some degree with technology, um, but I've always thought that um, the history of the game of golf is really important. Um, there's holes out there that don't even play anywhere near the same as what they used to play like. Over a history of time now, you'll see the winners at Augusta National come from a certain bracket, and they're the guys who bomb it. And technology nowadays, as we have with the R9 driver, allows these bombers to hit the ball straighter. So therefore, you know, the dispersion pattern which used to exist is now coming down to like this, so fairways get bored in and trees get bored in but they lengthen the golf course to par 4 is 505 yards. And the reason why I went for the Tour Preferred is because 
I have never really tried perimeter weighted golf clubs. Um, I've always been a very much the small forged muscle back type of guy for 30 years. Um, and when I got onto the um, into the testing aspect of it, I noticed my trajectory and the distance of the golf ball coming off the set of golf clubs I used that week prior for years and years prior to that. So that was like six to seven yards longer per iron. And I went, that's an amazing difference. And I know the difference between irons I've used in the past, which is a little clickier, crisper feel. Um, these are a little softer feel. So for me, that's extremely important. All the years I've been playing the game, from a softball to the new golf ball nowadays, I always like that golf ball to feel like it was on the golf club for a period of time. And, and these irons gave me that instant feedback straight away. So those two things from a player's perspective are the two priorities that you should really look at. And, and they hit the nail on the head with me. When I went down to this senior event, it must have been like I had gold in my bag or something. I mean, every player came up and pulled out every golf club I had in my bag. I think they knew there was a few rumors running around out there that my association with Taylor May was in the wind, and they wanted to find out, okay, what does he have in his bag? The reaction of the players really said it all for me. Um, I think right now you'd be crazy if you didn't keep up with technology. Uh, you'd be dumber than a box of rocks. Because you know everybody else is doing exactly the same thing. And technology is on such an advancing fine line that four to five or six yards in your iron play is a huge advantage, four to five, six yards. I mean, that's taking a seven iron instead of a six iron. Um, so you're actually making the game a little bit easier for yourself for again, your distance control of your shot. So you should stay ahead of it. We do it with our drivers. You know, uh, the R9 is a, a state-of-art, state-of-the-art driver out there on the market today. And every player, I mean, look what TaylorMade is. It's the number one driver on, the, in, on all tours around the world. Because why? Because the players choose to go to technology. Well, you, if, if the tour players are doing it, imagine what the advantage is for the, the regular player. The regular player needs all the help they can get. Um, the tour player, we're just doing it because it, we think it's making us better, which it does do. So if we're extracting the maximum value out of it, imagine what everyday Joe Bloggs out there who plays off shooting 100, for example. He's now going to be hitting the golf ball further. He's now got the, the ability to correct his slice by making the adjustment. Um, or correct his hook by making an adjustment with, his, with the R9 driver. So, like I said before, if you're a pro, you'd be crazy if you didn't use it. If you're an amateur, you're even dumber than a pro if you didn't use it. So I'll put it to you that way. <laughs> I'd like to make the cut, to be honest with you. Again, it depends on the weather conditions. Um, if the golf course is very firm and very fast, um, I think it might play a little bit more into my uh, playability of the golf course. So it just depends. If, I mean, goal number one, get to the weekend. Goal, if goal number one is achieved, then just see, see where you position yourself on the weekend. Um, and you never know. You know, if you get yourself, like at the British Open, I just ease myself all the way into the tournament, then you know, you're there with the last nine holes to go. You never know what's going to happen. So... Uh, it's just wait and go see. <laughs>